So in general, uh, as it is often said, uh, all uh, phenomena arises in dependence upon conditions, and those conditions are greatly directed or dependent upon um, one's motivation or the, the intention or motivation. And so for that reason, um, motivation or intention is exceedingly important when it comes to, um, you know, how uh, our actions, the direction of our, our karmic stream. Um, so especially whenever we are engaging in the activities of study or hearing, contemplation and meditation, um, it's important that we check our motivation, that we make sure that the intention for doing so or the intention that is directing those activities um, is one that is pure. Um, and um, of the potential for pure mind states, um, then uh, in particular to have a mind that is motivated uh, to benefit others, to bring benefit uh, to sentient beings. Um, is exceedingly powerful or very important. Um, so 
uh, first of all, we have a human birth uh, complete with the leisures and endowments. Uh, so we have obtained that which is difficult to obtain, which is a rare, precious human birth. Uh, and we also have um, the conditions which are incredibly difficult to encounter, which are those conditions um, of the leisures and endowments. Um, so with a, an understanding of having this exceedingly rare and precious opportunity, um, and with a mind of uh, faith and, and confidence, um, without even thinking, you know, too far off, you know, that the, that the result will be, you know, sometime in the far distant future. Um, but to, to temporarily recognize um, also all of the benefits that come from uh, really dedicating ourselves uh, to the practice of Dharma, um, even the benefits that come immediately in this life. Um, there's the temporary uh, fruitions of peace um, or happiness and contentment that come as a result of Dharma practice. Uh, and then, of course, there are the long term. Uh, benefits, the ultimate benefit of liberation and full awakening. Uh, so everything that is needed um, to achieve these, uh, uh, these fortunate results um, is present, are present. All of the, the necessary conditions are, are present. So what an extraordinary thing um, to have all of those necessary circumstances present. Um, so this really gives us cause for feeling really delighted, really overjoyed um, at the good fortune of our own circumstances. And this kind of um, appreciation uh, can also stimulate great inspiration to dedicate ourselves in the practice, to spur us um, toward, uh, to spur us in our, medita um, in our resolve, you know, in meditation. Um, so, uh, that which is so difficult to achieve, a precious human birth has been achieved, um, but that alone isn't enough. We have to make use of it. We have to actually use this, this opportunity, this precious uh, human birth well. Um, and so, uh, yeah. Uh what ちゃんばたにんげせやでれんがつみじゆじゆごれへんなペントビックさんばじゴグレティいなやとんだミクサでカレセなペントやたカネトゴセなとんがつだんじんばじよれちんでんやたんごねだんじせやこんやばくんじ
Tata Chambada in the Chancho Sentita, Carsenaco, Tabi Money, Tap Danzi Payak Tap Danzi Maya and Bebasoyak Tap Tata Chambata in the team at the door. Chendu Tinu, G. Tindigi told him as a Chamber in the Jivina, Dartan Zimba Chingding and the Rana Damding and Chingding and Teletin, and Nebasu so great, isn't it? Chambata in the so raw. Tindy Indu. ที่ตอนนี้จะมีเลขส่งได้ตาอาจจะทําไม่ Lela or Pogro, Tamata, Danzi Show Chimbu, you be Gabla. Oh, Tango in your shan, a pen talk to somebody, Zamanoji, Shanji Guzamotamina, Mata Chamba Jayan, Cabo, Ninji Jayan, Cabo, Yungu or what? Indeed, do I rank cheating some big londo which you owe me, Danzi Bank, Chit Chamba Gungo, Zambina? Young for the Chamba Tis, Chamba Gunga, Lela, what a penny young for the S. A ที่นี่ถ้าจะทราบเท่าว่าเราต้องดังสิเป๋ชอบเชิงบุญยอดว่าที่นี่ตั้งเงี้ยเชิงบุญยอดว่าที่นี่ตั้งเงี้ยเช
because at all times, really, we're, we're really pretty much um, motivated by self-interest. I'm always thinking I, um, you know, I and me and um, really everything sort of revolving around our own, um, our, ourselves and our own self-interest, really like 24 hours a day. Um, so that even when we sleep, um, this is still how phenomena manifests in our dreams. It's like, you know, this and that happens to me. I feel scared. I feel, um, uh, oh, I get something. or I get something <laughs> or, you know, we have, um, all sorts of different things that happen in our dreams, but still we're, we're always sort of the center of uh, that dream experience. Um, and so this is, this indicates, you know, how deeply ingrained this habit of self-grasping is. So it's not easy to reverse this habit of self-grasping. Uh, and in fact, if we try to just practice love and compassion um, without kind of making the connection that actually um, even more than benefiting others, these qualities of love and compassion actually benefit ourselves. Um, so actually in the beginning, we can kind of skillfully use this understanding to subdue the mind of self-grasping through the motivation of self-grasping. Um, because when it is so, sort of motivated by our own self-interest, you know, because actually um, through generating greater love and compassion, um, most of all, we are the one who reaps the benefit of that. Um, so just like, uh, just like Jetson Milarepa has said, um, all of the, um, or the wish to benefit others and the actions that are meant um, to, or intended to achieve the benefit of other, others are all the causes for one's own happiness. Um, so really the best way to, um, to abandon self-clinging um, is through generating love and compassion. And this actually brings about the greatest benefit and happiness for oneself. So uh, while our self-grasping is very strong, we can, we can, we can train ourselves to sort of see, at, see it as a, um, a real benefit to ourselves um, to, to cultivate these qualities of love and compassion, to diminish um, the self-centered, self-grasping attitude. Um, and, uh, and then as a, a result, as we do that, then really there is greater contentment and fulfillment, greater happiness um, that is experienced within um, for one's, oneself. Um, and so we, it's not just that by practicing love and compassion that, that the benefit is for others. Most of all, the benefit actually comes to oneself. Um, and so, so with that understanding, we can think, oh, I want to have happiness. Um, and so therefore, I'm really going to make an effort to cultivate the qualities of love and compassion and really practice putting others first. Um, and even if at first that objective is kind of motivated by self-interest actually, um, it will in fact have the effect of causing um, the self-grasping to diminish. Um, and so eventually, actually, it will become, even if it isn't, if one's love and compassion is actually kind of motivated by self-interest more than it is really deep and sincere love and compassion, um, eventually it will actually develop into true and, and genuine love and compassion and, and interest in, in achieving, you know, and accomplishing the welfare and benefit of others. Um, but as long as we we don't cultivate those qualities and we continue to just you know operate as the center of our own universe um then it's like being bound up with a rope um where there isn't any way to really benefit oneself and there's no um there isn't really any way to benefit others and also um one is not benefiting oneself mm. <coughs> Uh, 
ဆန်ဂျီဆုံးတယ်တာဆင်ပြုတ်တို့မှာတာဆုံးတို့မှာဆက်ကြီးနံပါတ်တော့ဟာဒီနာနဲ့ဒါတန်ဇင်ပါတ
you know, with with uh, respect to desire um, for the or grasping um, at, at the qua desirable qualities of sense objects, this is also motivated by the mind of self grasping. It is the self grasping mind, the self centered mind that is always desiring, that is always desiring to get something, to have something, to consume something. Um, if there is no self grasping there, then the desire. Um, desirous and lustful mind greatly, um, just it, it naturally decreases. Um, and so ordinarily, uh, it really is the case that um, the more we desire um, for sense objects, um, the less satisfied we actually are. Uh, because it is a mistake to think that the object that we desire is actually going to um, create this sort of fulfillment um, th that the the desiring mind is is so much seeking um, it, it so it actually it is the desire once the desire is there then the desire can actually never really be fulfilled um, so even though one may get uh, one object or consume you know one object that one desires um, one will very shortly again just desire more and more um, um, and so it's usually the case uh, that um, that the more that one um, sort of uh, indulges in in the craving for desirous desirable sense objects, uh, the more that that desire for those objects will increase. Though sometimes it is the case, and Drupam said he's heard, you know, that um, one method that some people have said has worked for people who smoke, for instance, is that, you know, they um, will decide that they'll smoke all day long, you know, they'll just like smoke all day long, nonstop, you know, like, and then the next day, they'll That's sort of to try to stop then the next day they'll they'll sort of overdo it to an extent where it's no longer um, desirable to them anymore. So then the next day they don't want to smoke a cigarette. Um, so it's possible that this yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I totally got it wrong. <laughs> so he said that method doesn't work. <laughs> like even if you smoke all day long. So this was an example to show this. I'm sorry, I totally misunderstood it. Um, maybe it's just that smoking all day long sounded so gross. <laughs> Um, but uh, he said that if you, you know, if somebody who smokes, if they smoke all day long because they're desiring to smoke, still they'll want to smoke tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, uh, oh, that's uh, Yeah. Sorry. Uh, there's a little example of Jun Terwa. That's on Dobat Samia, maybe Jun Sanji Zamatambina. That's a Chinese ago, sugar. Sugar mambo, sadu, tangas of sugar and Doba Yorba. In a tinny, sugar soa latine, Dobat Samia Yoma, in a Nova Cario Lavina, tinny, chi, chala, himbalatin, sweet, tan, yum yomarwa, Casna could sugar the mambo salad in central tene. In a case, it's our need a sugar de mazarina. Tinning at one more yore, but she does not be one more, but she boy or what? Timothy didn't more sing a hippie, one more, she boy or it. Tine, Chalanga he, Tinikunu, Gahipe, Changar Motan, Tongmanuma, Tindina, in a chalk horayan, this chicken modi yores. Naturally, this fellow or this normal or true girl. But a tinny, Kondoba say a chee. You got the Latin, Koji Karsegota, Natsuke, Monichin and Doba Tiki, Natsuke, Doba Chembu Yuna, Tinning at Doba Drop to Blaze, whatever you wish, Noji. In a Tidrovia Salok, Dogmata Viki, Ching Doba Dovia, Doba Tiki, Natsuke, a satisfaction chair to the blocking it so what in Doba Chadi is. Um, so, uh, also, for instance, with the example of sugar, 
Um, so sugar is like really very, very sweet and also something that is can be kind of a very sort of addictive substance. Um, so that, the, you know, those who have um, some attachment to sugar, um, it's like, you know, there's, there's um, always sort of a craving or a desire for sugar and, and that, um, you know, eating uh, sugar doesn't really satisfy the desire for sugar. It just um, continues to increase. Um, on the other hand, when, um, and for somebody who, who eats a lot of sugar, um, then they sort of don't identify sweetness and other flavors. Um, so actually there are other, and, the food. Oh, and food. other foods. So for instance, there are some, you know, if, if for somebody who doesn't eat sugar, um, then something like a, a fruit, a piece of fruit actually tastes really sweet. Um, or, you know, there are some vegetables that also have a pretty sweet flavor. Um, and so there's, you know, if, if for somebody who doesn't eat sugar, um, then their, their palate becomes more sensitive to the flavor of sweetness in other foods. Um, and so, and there, the, the, for instance, um, even tea. So for somebody who hasn't ever um, had uh, uh, sugar or doesn't mix um, their tea with sugar, um, tea itself it has a, a sort of sweet quality already, even if you don't add anything to it. Um, but if um, one becomes habituated to always eating sugar, um, then that, that sweetness in the other foods is never something that one can appreciate because there's so much um, desire desire for this sort of, you know, um, coarse experience of, of the flavor of sweetness. Um, and then there's, um, and as a result, then there's less satisfaction. One can't uh, enjoy um, kind of the naturally complex uh, flavors of, of food in the same way. Um, so really, it's actually desire that breaks our ability for satisfaction. Our satisfaction becomes broken because of desire. Um, and then we're, we're unable to really be, feel satisfied or fulfilled. ทีนี้เจอกูอยู่สรีสมุดะงารังสัมสุชีวินะจะทั้งอสุกอมเจียบดุยละกูยัวเดมเจเดมละสู้เจลุเสียจิตัวเนี่ยจักเจนนอนที
essentially tighten when tighten is tightening is needed and loosen when loosening is needed is is really kind of um, the way to to translate this um, accurately I think but um, in any case the, this these are instructions for the practice of Mahamudra and it's really um, you know uh, in connection with the inner experience of the mind and um, sort of how to uh, gain control over the mind without, you know, and in connection with the flow of discursive thoughts. Um, but also we can apply this to our life um, and working with, um, with, uh, with the afflictions such as desire that arise in our, our life, you know, or through, throughout the activities of our lives. Um, and so you know, there are times when tightening is needed and there are times when um, it is maybe more effective to be a little bit more loose. Um, so especially in the case of something, you know, a habit maybe that we have identified that has become particularly destructive, um, you know, individually that um, maybe uh, we have, a, you know, a propensity of desire that's really not under control, that's really um, kind of out of control. And and if we allow ourselves any sort of looseness around it, then it kind of takes over. Um, so in that case, when you know that something like this doesn't benefit your mind and it doesn't benefit your body, um, then sometimes it's appropriate to just cut it cut it completely, you know, to set, um, to, to practice this sort of tightening when tightening is needed and to really um, practice sort of a um, sort of a strict um, um, you know, uh, ab abandonment around that particular thing, or like by making a rule. What that indeed is China, Tine, Cocarsina, Yungo, Yina, ah, something also make rule or run a Sony, Jig, Tindy, Chini, Vina, young, co Jig, hundred percent, and other Chito, we are Marwa. Te and yet, um, sometimes when we make rules for ourselves like this, um, you know, and of course, um, it, it becomes, it can become really difficult to uphold those rules. So sometimes we can't 100% um, you know, fulfill our commitment to ourself with regard to this. Um, and then at that time, sometimes, you know, then it might be important to relax a little bit, um, to sort of, to, to loosen um, somewhat uh, so that, you know, we, like say for instance, if um, one has decided to give up drinking or one has decided to give up smoking um, and one has created a very, you know, um, a rule uh, for oneself, um, but then maybe one isn't able to follow through. One, one simply can't, um, uh, can't, is not at, at the place yet where they're able to, um, to maintain that rule, um, and so they break their their commitment. Um, then, you know, in that situation, then um, to uh, sort of loosen and and be relaxed about the situation rather than really beating oneself up because sometimes that kind of rigidity won't actually work. Um, and so then one can say, okay, the first time this didn't work. The second time, I will. I'll try it a second time, and so then, without worry, you know, when there is still sort of this looseness or this relaxation around um, a, a more relaxed discipline, um, which in some cases can end up being uh, more productive. General Doba Doba Tiki. 
ဒီနေ့ကျတောက်ငါဆိုကြီးဒေါ်ပါမကြီးလောက်တူခလာဆာရာရောမတွေ Kanangasu ကိုတဲဝါကြီးတွေထုပ်ရောမှာတယ်အဟူဒါတဆမတောင်ကိုကတော့ငါဆိုချူညမ်းလန်းချင်းညလားခေစိမိချိထူလောမိဝီနာ
the cause of the suffering uh -huh. so then 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 having too many t-shirts and spending all your money on them and so forth becomes a cause of suffering right. um, so it is like that with all all objects of desire food and and anything you know really that that can um uh that is you know one of the desirable qualities of the sense objects ก็ดอลลาร์มิลเลียนบิลเลียนยอร์ดีอินะทะดุนกปางกอราเรงะกุปตุซัมบะกุจิกะจิกจังเลยอืมเดสตรีทโฮมเลสเดยดังะคะล
to get their needs met, um, even though, you know, actually, so, so in this case, with this mind of, of feeling, same situation, it's well. actually becomes the same situation. So the billionaire um, ends up having that same sort of driven by the, the mind of being unsatisfied um, in the same way that the, that the homeless person does. Um, and so really, because due to craving, as long as there is craving, um, then there is no way to really feel satisfied. Um, because the very definition definition of craving um, is that one is not satisfied, that one needs or, or wants something. Um, so when there's contentment there, uh, then somebody is truly wealthy. Then this is really um, the true meaning of, of wealth. Um, day to day, dugnaume, gare lawin. Mm. So, and this doesn't have to just apply to wealth or material possessions, but really even just day to day um, with whatever the circumstances are, day to day thinking, um, you know, however things are, it's fine. I'm content with what is as it is on a day to day basis. Or day to day, or yeah, when you eat, drink. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes you not much pay attention, you know, um, but very difficult, uh, but through the mindfulness, you know, whatever you eat, it's good food, you know, perfect meal or tea. So even though not necessarily the special fancy food, but also the, with the fancy food is depending on your perception, you know. Sometimes we see like an expensive restaurant, right? We think uh, expecting and uh, we, what is the attachment is like we expect, okay, I now I'm going to expense a restaurant. So we expecting is like high expecting or probably very really delicious. But then if it comes, it's the, we're not satisfied. So, So then this doesn't matter. We're thinking, okay, oh, yes, we give the money, but really does is uh, not get we wish. So like also Wait. depending in the mind. So anyway, so this is good mail or simple mail. <laughs> <laughs> but many times, so each time is appreciate. Uh, so that way is we have to build up in a piece. So also, Peace, okay, we want to peace, happy, and relax, everyone, right? But this is not, uh, comes, comes just only one time, you know, or quickly. But also this build up, you know, uh, we difficult, uh, but other hand is whatever we do, like moment to moment, it's time to be happy. If you walk, Try to be happy. If you work or if you walk. You work, walk, mm -hmm. eat. So sometimes this the if attachment blocks, you know. So you have the food but not satisfied. But food is not changed. But you have to be happy. So that moment, actually we the Dharma practice, okay, we many ways Dharma practice. Yes, of course, we are everybody knows, right? So meditation, chanting, recitation. It is done practice. But not only that, so first we, are, what do you think, why we don't practice, right? That's the big question, the important. So because we are done practice, we have temporarily and longer peace, happy. That's what we are looking for. That's what we wish. So then in order to build peace, happy is have to build moment to moment. Okay, during the practice, or even though like I say, you're cooking or walking, working. So 
whatever you see object so you just have to look like positive side the work you think you said you if you didn't think it work is bad okay uh, and it's kind of interesting you know this uh in florida <laughs> this seems to be very hard right well there is just attitude more too hard you know so they really hit this heat hit us really hard the heat hits us yes really hot mm -hmm. then it feels it, very it hot feels, the sensation actually becomes that it's very hot right but this mind is this in, interesting this our perception and environment i believe 50 50 okay we cannot change the weather cool you know that's naturally weather is hot so this 50%, we cannot do anything, whether it's hot. But 50% depending on perception. Mm -hmm. So first is terrible, you know, just very hot or sunny, humid. If you have this kind of perception, then feels all like that, or oh, humid, really hot. Humid and hot. Yeah. Right. But first, the motivation is, that's fine, you know, just okay, maybe cool down, a little bit, or maybe a little bit cloudy today. Probably okay right now, hot, but maybe cool down, maybe breathing comes. Maybe a breeze comes. Right. They happen. So just not that bad, you know, just not miserable. Mm -hmm. So that's I saying this kind of like or day to day or moment to moment. So how to Dharma practice. Okay, so I think we finished the the bit of the length and chat on us. Now it's next one is what is the this might have. Oh sorry. Uh, so twenty three. Twenty three yi to yung we yu tang tip it yard yi to jun jan zon chi yi tun zeba na yan denber metawe ye shen chak mama jar se lala yins. Uh, so then number verse number 23 says when encountering pleasing sense objects though they appear beautiful like rainbows in summertime not to view them as real and to abandon clinging attachment is the bodhisattva's practice ตาอีตยงเวงโหยอเดโซงโหยอเดเทนิตังกาติอินเชมินโกกดูซัมบาโรซัมซังกาโซคาร์วิงโชคิมโบโรตังกาติมินเมทะมินดูซัมบาอ
Um, but then sometimes, you know, if, if we don't act on, on that impulse, uh, then the next day, um, that thing that we needed, thought we really needed today, the next day we kind of are like, oh, I don't really need it so, you know, so much. Maybe that, that actually the attitude can like have completely changed. Um, and so it really actually happens quite often like this. Um, the, there's a strong desire that arises in the moment, but then if a little time passes and it completely dissipates. Um, so the, the nature of um, fixation and, and clinging or attachment changes. Um, so it is not a permanent it, it, that the, when an attachment arises and the next moment it can um, no longer be there. And so um, if uh, we have sort of a, this desire or attachment um, to outer objects, to things and outer objects that appear, um, though they may appear really um, beautiful and alluring, um, to recognize, you know, without um, thinking of them as as being really permanent and, and real, but to realize their elusive nature, like a rainbow in summertime. Um, and also to recognize that, um, that when that the grasping mind arises, it, it won't remain there, that it will, that it will pass. Um, and so therefore to um, abandon uh, attachment to, um, to abandon clinging attachment is the bodhisattva's practice. Mm. Oh, that is not easy. That's why we have to do a lot of work. That's why we have to do a lot of work. 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 So especially, you know, when it it's, um, comes to desire for material things. So, you know, we're not going to become completely free of desire, you know, towards uh, material objects. So, um, you know, but, but in it's, it's not, maybe it's not such a problem, you know, that sometimes there are things that, that we desire that arise, um, but to, to have an attitude of flexibility so that um, it's, it's sort of like, oh, I would like this thing. If I get it, um, I would like that. But if I don't get it, that's fine too. Um, so to have sort of some flexibility around it. Um, and when there is, um, when, when uh, there's a great, overall, a greater sense of, of contentment and there's this flexibility there, then if we, if we don't get the, the thing, um, then the, it doesn't cause us suffering. Uh, but if there's a lot of grasping there, then it really becomes, we're not okay um, without having those desires met. Um, and so then therefore it ends up bringing suffering. Mm-hmm. で、ちかすてよれ。たんごにちのがとピースパーフェクチャーでよれ。ハッピー。オー、ノープロブレム。たんごにちな、がとたんノープロブレムだおじ。チャーでよれ。いいねや、リアリティ。どんげんやまれち
you know, convenient, there's a lot of convenience and comfort in our life, particularly here in the West. Um, the roads are really well made. Um, people generally live in pretty comfortable houses. There's air conditioning, there's heat. Um, and so really, actually, on, on the one hand, you know, this is really good. This is nice because um, everything that we are needed is there. It's sort of like an abundance of favorable conditions. Um, but when we really examine, you know, how much real contentment and happiness does that actually bring us? Um, actually, maybe not so much. Um, in reality, um, it could, it, it may actually be the case that even prior to all of this comfort and convenience, um, that when life was simpler, um, that actually there was greater contentment. You know, when we back when we didn't have um, AC and and heating. The interesting the wa bena cha cha wi na nge tan tin di google is am la wi me ti na yang ji ngo ni ta da ji lu fu ke environment system kor naturally system ka ri la wi na ta nge ma da wi na ben ji da ta da da ji ji da ta zo hi ti yo ma de ko ba ye ye si yo ma de yi na yang ko su ka se energy ya bo do ro wa ก็ในฮิวแมนบีคนอื่นนี่ตัวเนี่ยมันเอาไว้ในแค่แฮนด์ดัชที่ตัวก็ได้จุ่มเส้นขึ้นเนาะก็ทําอยู่ในเพจเ
Um, so, so when uh, there is, uh, you know, when we sort of sit inside all, sit all day with the EAC, um, then actually the energy um, of the body decreases. Um, the, this is actually not so good for, for health. Um, and it's not just actually, it's not just a matter of heat and AC, but um, also this point of um, actually working the body. Um, so we think that, you know, just relaxing and not having anything to do um, is kind of ideal, that that's actually really kind of comfortable, um, but actually life, no. like a better life. But actually the truth of the matter is it, it's actually much worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting is ya. Mm -hmm. I know this ya. Mm -hmm. In that the pool and also ya that I grew up before me and uh, my father time or my time. In the ya, how sign a calligraphy. And that ya have that big big note in the picture ya top chair is okay. Three hundred pounds. Kiki or what? Kiki tene ntawa ntawa ndo go go is. So, for instance, take the example of yaks. <laughs> um, so, Drupan says, you know, he grew up in Tibet and before him, and, you know, like also throughout like the generations before him, um, they would, you know, when they would take the yak on these journeys, um, and the yak, it would be an incredibly, um, you know, uh, uh, difficult journey for the yak. Like, first of all, they would be loaded up with huge packs, you know, 300 pound packs. Mm -hmm. um, and they would walk, you know, they would travel for like a month and they would uh, every day, Months. you know, uh, every day for the course of a month, you know, from early in the morning into the like at night. Um, and they would have to go every day loaded with this huge pack, sometimes really cold weather, sometimes not enough grass to eat. So sometimes the yak would really be like almost on, die. Uh, yeah, on the verge of death. Yina tindi gabla karsenata, kokale tindi ji yore yan, yata zola kadik top chimbo, shuk chimbo, tindi yung yore is, tani kong shiba na, 300 pounds of kito yoro. Tata nanga to papul get your love, tata tindi kine kale yala, pechu kayam in the wa. Um, but these days, um, there aren't, they're not traveling so much, you know, with Yak no, no in this way, all. not even traveling at all. Um, because, uh, you know, these days, you know, they don't, so, so there are Yak, but the Yak are not used in the same way. So, you know, they don't need, you know, with nowadays, everybody has cars and so forth. So the Yak are really just raised, you know, for meat. Um, and so, the sh the change the physiological change of the like yak that um is really extreme these days they you know those yak that would travel like that they became extremely strong and powerful also um, big. Oh, and big. really big but these days the yak are like really kind of um uh, weak and and a lot smaller. So these days, you know, they don't even really have so many big yak. Um, that they're they're really um, you know much weaker and much smaller, and you know can't really you know they're not very strong. Mm -hmm. So this band over this. <laughs> so this is just an example because we're also like yeah. <laughs> okay, so today that it's how to work. I was at twenty three. The way you think you want to. あれだいいというように言うたんてびてすだけんとぎゅうさでそんぐらいだいてひゅうらあ、てりだ24うんでちょうどてばどうやだびてとちょうどよめねオッケー24てどんなのとまなふきだとなでんばるそんあたんちて
uh, says diverse sufferings are like a child's death in a dream. How exhausting it is to apprehend confused appearances is real. Therefore, when encountering unfavorable conditions, viewing them as delusion is the bodhisattva's practice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ตาขวาเอ่อทีนี้จีเอ่อชิกิยอเรสยีเนี่ยตันเดลาจิกดุงาตุซามาลาอ่าทีนี้เอ่อจะทํามะลําหนาจีเรสอเรกันนะจ
And they, these kinds of dreams can occur. And then uh, when they wake up, uh, then they think, oh, it was just a dream. And then suddenly all the suffering and the, the angst or the despair is, is suddenly gone. Um, it was, you know, as if it had never happened. Um, and so actually our experiences in life are actually just like this. Um, the experiences of suffering that uh, come also, um, they, they arise and then they dissipate or they disappear. Um, and so really all of the phenomena of samsara is dreamlike and illusory. It's just like a dream. Um, and so, um, uh, when suffering, the feeling of suffering arises, when this, the feeling of, of difficulty or hardship um, and the circumstances that arise, uh, the, or the circumstances that surround that have arisen, um, then the, the length or the degree to which we, we suffer is really in direct correlation with our grasping um, and a kind of like solidification of that experience of suffering. If we think, you know, it's really real, it's really solid, it's really happening, it's really true, um, and that kind of grasping onto the suffering makes it all the more um, painful. Um, so really, actually, suffering and whatever it is that, that occurs, all the phenomena of this life, um, is not permanent. It is not real. It is not solid. It does not really uh, exist in the way that we think it does. It's really um, just like a dream. Um, and this entire life is just like a dream. And so really, there's no need to be so... Um, you know, so, to, to so sort of invested and so um, to, to hold on to whatever occurs with such, um, with too much uh, grip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number <laughs> ตัวนั้นพอคนอ่ะทีนี้จิงั้นสุดนําตอกไปดุงเงี้ยคือนําตอกคนอ่ะสุดจิเจดัชชีวินะระยะยอมมาละวะอ่าพอทีนี้เจ
uh, then you can't really get a hold of them. It's not really a, a thing that you can get a hold of, happiness or suffering, uh, because thoughts are always changing. Concepts are always shifting and changing. We can sort of impute, if we, if we fixate, it can have the appearance of being sort of ongo ongoing, you know, or sort of one certain way. But if we really look, then we see that um, that there's that that they're always changing. And so um, whatever, and when we look to find the concepts themselves, you know, where are they when they turn the mind, when we turn the mind um, around to look within, um, and if we try to identify where is this suffering of mine, um, there's nothing to identify there. There's nothing that we can really get. Um, there's a, we, we don't really find anything. Um, and so, um, to think, you know, the idea I am suffering um, is is a concept. It's an idea. It's it's something that is is generated by the concepts in the mind. Um, and uh, when you also try to identify the concepts, um, if you look for them, you also can't really grab on to anything. There's nothing really identifiable there. Um, there's, there's no s sort of solid experience of suffering to identify. Um, and um, the same goes even for physical pain. You know, if we think, you know, I, if, um, when we're experiencing physical pain in the body, like my, my leg hurts, my tooth hurts, my head hurts, and so on and so forth. Um, these are also the experience of even physical pain is greatly connected to the concepts um, that we um, attribute or that we build around that physical sensation or physical experience. So for, to, for somebody who is a, um, an advanced meditator, they can actually transform even physical pain um, from, you know, painful into um, bliss. So actually the experience of, of physical pain um, can become the nature of bliss. Um, and at the very least, um, even the experience of physical pain um, ha in no way has an effect on the mind. Um, so even throughout the experience of the physical pain, it doesn't affect or, or harm the mind. Uh, because, and, and this mainly, you know, depends upon, um, it really all has to do with, with concepts. Sometimes of this belief, this or Wakarsena, Ognakonagdu, Ungonagdu, Lo Samguir, Nagi or Wa, take Nampoya Maris, Nagdu, Samguir, Reta, Jiranga to Yamletching and Maina, who fifteen fifteen no chadius at his, and the Jacha Nupchin of Chino, Chicknupchte. Namholo <laughs> In a painting, never chart of war, who tingy or married. In a painting, co permanent in a tongue, a lecal in a pain for your re, carcina, magic catch a lavna pain for your re, meditation china pain for your wa, tindu, cotia antinici, co that jajang of chung up chindo, jajang of chitty, suhook nata, jajang of chitty, co number the condo, which are the other not to me, how quiet you are this. So sometimes, you know, we hear this and maybe we don't really <laughs> believe it, you know, because um, especially somebody who's suffering from physical pain will, will say, well, no, no, I'm experiencing pain. It's not just my concepts. Like there's definitely physical pain happening in the body. Um, and, and yes, that is true. Um, but even in the case, you know, in that case, still about 50% of the pain is dependent upon the concept. So there is, you know, 50% is maybe the direct sensation of physical pain. Um, and 50% is all of the layers of concepts that are going on top of that pain. Um, and so, 
for example, and we've all had, surely had the experience of something similar, like Drupon says, you know, right now in his own experience, like his arm is hurting. So um, if he's saying, you know, if he's focusing on that pain, he can really feel, you know, that his arm is really in a lot of pain. Um, but if he goes, uh, even if it like set aside meditation, even if he goes outside and he sort of gets involved in something and he starts talking to people and he starts like, you know, doing Focus some more. work, he's focusing on work. Um, and then he really kind of forgets about the pain in his arm or his back or whatever. It. He doesn't feel it. Um, it, it if he remembers, the pain might still be there actually. So if he remembers it, he, he can feel the pain. Um, and same with with meditating, you know, if he if he chooses to, to recognize or, uh, you know, really um, go into the sensation of the pain, it, it's present. Um, but uh, it, it there's the recognition there that um, there about 50 percent of it also is really based on on concepts it really has to do with the concepts and how one is relating to that pain um mm. Mm -hmm. okay so we do i use some more uh, do i use some so there's a couple of questions on facebook okay. do you have yeah that's okay okay so the first question is from Sandra um, Barraza, and it says, um, addictive behaviors have a self-clinging root. What is the best method to remove self-clinging that may assist those that have addictions? Um, sorry, can you read that one more time? Self-clinging. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so it says addictive behaviors have a self-clinging root. What is the best method to remove self-clinging that may assist those that have addictions. Mm -hmm. So Garci Michik yang addiction dawo yorwa Garci ara yenada the um the zere yenada am tene nune chine the addiction de um dogzin la tene yongi yosare yeni yang ngatso the addiction yoken gi me la ropa chegi yona tene kongso yang dogzin pangya ki tapshi yakso the ropa chegi ki tapshi yakso kare yore ตัดจะต้องเทียวว่าเงาตัวดีเลเลอร์อยู่มาเรสเอดิชั่นเตะตัดช่วงวีนั้นตัดเอดิชั่นเสียดีโคบีตัดคาริกเอดิชั่นอ
you know, the the vice or whatever it is that, that, that one is addicted to over a really long period of time. Um, so it doesn't necessarily just start out as an addiction. You know, somebody doesn't become an addict by, you know, drinking um, alcohol the first time. Um, it is as something, you know, then one, um, when one habituates it, you know, for, for, weeks for months years, for yeah. years many years um, and then it, over the long term it becomes an addiction and so um, it is a really built up propensity or um, a, a very deeply established habit or pattern um, and so in order to correct or overcome that habit habit pattern it also can take a very long time and a great deal of training and of course you know the practices of meditation, of, um, you know, generating love and compassion, uh, which are really ways to address, as you said, the root, you know, to overcome the root of, of self-clinging, to cause that um, self-grassing mind to diminish. So these things can help. Um, but actually, you know, when it comes to addiction, there are really some great methods that um, what, you know, have been established um, here in the West. Um, so to actually do some course of treatment or a program that really addresses um, addiction, you know, or in some case, there may also be, um, you know, medication or, or treatments involving medication that might be beneficial too. Um, but, um, you know, sometimes in, in cases of serious addiction, um, you know, actually meditation and practicing loving compassion may not actually end up, end up being all that effective because one is so overpowered by the addiction. Um, so, so they can't focus, you know, if they actually meditate, they're not able to focus. And so there isn't so much benefit in that case. Um, and, but if the person is willing to listen, if they're open and they're, and they're willing to listen and they want help, um, and then if you, if you, um, you know, try to suggest these methods of working with the mind um, by practicing meditation, by um, maybe building a practice of some calm abiding little by little, by um, talking about the benefits of generating the qualities of love and compassion, this can also most definitely help. But sometimes also there may be, you know, something, um, something that sort of specifically addresses the problem of addiction to, to um, uh, maybe to, to do first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's another question from Peter uh, Ricard, and he asks, can suffering of mind be dispatched quickly or must it be gradual as we develop on the path? I'm going to ask you to read that one more time. Sorry. Sure. Um, so from Peter Ricard, he asks, can suffering of mind be dispatched quickly or must it be gradual as we develop on the path? Um, ก็ตรงนี้ที่เตลําซังเมบาโซทุกเรเบยังนาเตยินจิมินจิคาเลคาเลเตลําเรมบาชินาโซทุกทีนี่ดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิดิด
over time, you know, through um, a gradual sort of consistent practice or practice that's consistent. Um, so, but in general, as it is said, you know, that like samsara and nirvana are like two different sides of the same hand. Um, so sometimes it can be as simple as, you know, turning your hand over. Um, so, so sometimes the abandoning or letting go of um, fixation of su or suffering um, can be, in fact, instantaneous. Um, and then sometimes, you know, there's also um, a need, you know, it, sometimes it's not so easy and it, it really requires, you know, just kind of consistently coming back to it again and again over a long period, applying the different methods and anecdotes, um, like, for instance, in the case of addiction. You know, whereas, um, you know, it maybe isn't um, possible to have sort of an instantaneous uh, transformation, but over time, you know, with the willingness to change um, and applying different methods, reciting mantra, um, practicing meditation, um, you know, reading Dharma scriptures and so forth, um, all of these things over time um, help us to um, abandon uh, um, or to sort of diminish the the hold of that that suffering has on us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it for Facebook. Thank you, Rupesh. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we're going to uh, dedication. Mm -hmm. And actually, there was a, I believe there was a, um, yes, I think here. Mm. Uh, so one uh, prayer request, again, uh, which is uh, from Concho Pema. Uh, is uh, for his friend Divya Goldman, who is dying of cancer, and she's currently in hospice. Uh, so please hold her in your practice and prayers. And um, we'll recite the prayer on page 24, the dedication prayer. By the virtues collected in the three times, by myself and all beings in samsara and nirvana, and by the innate root of virtue, may I and all beings quickly attain unsurpassed, perfect, complete, precious enlightenment. May the teachings of the great Dragumba Ratna Shri, who is omniscient, Lord of the Dharma, master of interdependence, continue and increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day.